I believe justice will be the last move of God. What's going on now? Well, how about this right now? This is happening as we speak. Injustice. 102 farms have been attacked in the first two months of 2018 in South Africa. Now what's happening? Blacks are attacking white farm owners in South Africa. 1.7 farm attacks per day, one farmer murdered every five days. The government, which is now mainly uh, elected black officials, condones the theft of land of white farmers. This is literally a modern genocide. This is a headline from March 2018. South African politicians push for persecution of white farmers. They're going out on the streets saying, stop killing our farming and rural communities. Here's a tweet showing reverse racism. White farmers are being slaughtered in their homes in South Africa and there's no global outcry. Reported by the Telegram, March 2018. It says reverse racism is real and deadly in South Africa. People are like this because they haven't been taught justice. And in fact, there's been many crusades in South Africa. How many mega churches are in South Africa? And all they did was preach the gospel of grace. And they failed to preach the gospel of justice. And this is why we have so much injustice in the world and in the church. And if the church had the chance to influence the world, we always stuffed it up. Why didn't any of the mega churches of South Africa who, are, who number over 10,000 in Cape Town, in Johannesburg, where are these churches speaking about justice? So it's all grace, 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 and these same people, many of them calling themselves Christian, are killing the other side now. So supposedly white Christians killed blacks. Now the blacks who've had supposed revival and all become, so many become Christian, they're killing the whites. And what a blasphemy to the name of God. What a discredit to the work of the gospel. I think the problems going on in Brazil, the problems going on in South Africa, the blame lays at the feet of the church. We got to take part of the blame. Because these countries had mega revival, revivals we wish we heard about in Australia. Never had such revival. Where churches that are blowing, you know, past 10,000 mark are popping up everywhere. And witch doctors give up because they've had supernatural encounters and children pray for healing and they get, people get healed. This stuff was reported in the 80s and 90s in Brazil, in South Africa. And look at the chaos that they're in now. And I look at the content of what was preached. I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm not trying to put them down. I'm saying you had the opportunity and you didn't preach justice. That's why we're going to do it now. That's why I don't, I don't dare with a platform that we have to reach millions of people, 200,000 subscribers. I don't dare to play church. I get hate mail. I get negative comments, and I keep pushing through. Why? Because I'm accountable to Jesus. If you're given a platform and you won't preach the whole counsel of the Word of God, are you doing it for money? Are you doing it for fame? If people leave your church because you say this stuff, so what? One day we stand before Christ. I'm not going to ask how many people were in the church, how much money you made. We need people in church. We need money to pay bills, of course, and employees, of course. But we won't compromise the message. And we've already seen what happens when you get lots of Christians, but you don't teach all of the Word, including the tough stuff. Justice is tough. All the people on the grace camp will hate this message. Then the people on the kingdom camp don't really like it because I'm not all for them either. I'm not for any side. I'm all for biblical balance. Can we appreciate all the different views, realizing we need all of them, and none of them are completely right? And yet none of them are completely wrong. So I end up stepping on everybody's toes, don't I? But in fact, but I love everybody as well. 
How can this be happening in supposedly Christian South Africa with the biggest crusades you've ever seen in Africa? How is this possible? Look at these pictures that are coming out of South Africa. The persecuted minority we're supposed to ignore. And some people think, oh, well, serves them right. The whites colonize and oppress people. Yes, so then you will oppress them. That makes it right. You don't understand justice. You haven't heard a sermon on justice. At least we've got our journalist, Rita, tweeting about it. Here's a guy that's in hospital. And she tweets, silence was the response when a dozen Australian human rights organizations and experts who named these people experts, were contacted last week about the extraordinarily cruel violence being perpetrated on white farmers in South Africa. I love the hypocrisy of the left. They're all for women until it's successful conservative women. Yeah? They're all for racial minorities until the minority are white people. You're as, you're as bigoted, as ungodly, as the rest of them. And you perpetuate the vicious cycle because you haven't experienced revival. You haven't been born again. Your sins haven't been washed. You got as many problems in your heart as anybody else. And now you got power, which makes you even worse. Because power corrupts most people. The gentlest people, the gentlest souls, will become corrupt when they get power. That's why you're surprised. You think, oh, they were so nice. They were so lovely. And then when they got power, when they get the upper hand, watch them act like demons. And Christians do it as well. Because pastors, we need to teach justice, not just grace. And this is an unjust situation. This defies the gospel. This defies and defiles the name of Jesus. We've got another journalist. Thank God we got Andrew Bolt. I think you got to pray for him. He reported, reported Paul Tuhi on the shocking number of attacks on white farmers in South Africa. The Bolt report aired this. Psalm 89, verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. You can't replace it. You can't change it. That's what he says, and there's lots of scriptures about that. We are currently, it seems, in the church age, experts on righteousness. If that seems like a very religious word to you, the word they use right now is grace. The subject of righteousness is the same as grace. All right? By grace, we become righteous. We are righteous by the grace of God. It's the same topic. Right? It's not by our works, our deeds, our religious rule-keeping that God makes us righteous. He does it by grace. Same topic. You understand? We're pretty expert on this now. You know, we know that we don't get saved by kissing a statue or pouring holy water from the River Jordan on us. That's not how you get saved. You need the grace of Jesus Christ. And it's apart from your own works. But we are not experts on justice. If God's throne is what he's building, he's establishing his authority throughout the universe, and he does it on righteousness and justice, and we only talk about righteousness and grace, we're missing half the story. You need both. John chapter 16 is another scripture that I believe indicates what is the last end time prophetic move of God. It's right there in front of all our eyes. You've read it many times. Let me show you from an end time perspective. John chapter 16, verse 7. Jesus himself says this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. What for? And when he comes... He will convict the world concerning three things, sin and righteousness and judgment. What will the Holy Spirit do? Open book quiz. What will the Holy Spirit do? We're in the age 
of the church. We're in the New Testament time. What will he do? He will convict the world of sin and righteousness. That's called the gospel of grace. We do that very well. We tell the world that the world has broken the law. Everyone's broken the righteous law of God, the holy laws of God, and we're in trouble. But if you will believe Jesus, he will be, he's already been punished for you and you can receive his righteousness. It's an exchange. His righteousness, your sin, get swapped. Sin and righteousness. That's the gospel. Isn't that the end? No! That's not the end of what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit will do one more thing in the New Testament age. He will convict the world of judgment. Another word for that is justice. That's the gospel of the kingdom. And the gospel of the kingdom is mentioned more times than the gospel of grace. So for those who are grace-only people, you are right, but in part. And being right in part means you're wrong to insist on only one side. Justice to many people in this world is good news.